So this is the video for section 9.3, Sample Means, and when we talk about uh, sampling distributions, the problems kind of get categorized into two big categories, means and proportions. In section 9.1, we just did some uh, general t uh, terms. Section 9.2 was all about proportions. Section 9.3 is all about means. And so one of the things we'll have to, you'll have to worry about, kind of the big problem solving, when you see a problem on the chapter 9 test, is it a problem involving means? or is it a problem involving proportions? And usually it's pretty easy to figure out if you're talking about averages or if you're talking about proportions. Um, but okay, right away in, in the first video on section 9.1 we talked about these two uh, things. This is the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar or the mean of all possible samples. This is the standard deviation of all possible uh, standard deviation of x bar or the standard deviation of all possible samples. And Okay, here we go. Right away we've got two formulas. We've got the mean of x bar is mean, is mu. It's the mean, and think what that says, it's kind of a goofy formula, but it says the mean of all possible samples, that's mu of x bar, is the same thing as the mean of the population. Okay? Then the standard deviation of all possible x bars is standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. And where it comes from comes from, is a little bit more complicated. But notice the this relates to the big idea that larger samples have smaller standard deviations. In other words, as you increase n, this quantity is going to go down. And now specifically we can know exactly how it goes down. If you want your sample to be, you know, one-tenth as large, sorry, if you want your standard deviation of your sa sample distribution to be one-tenth of what it was before, you need a, sa a sample size 100 times because it's under the square root. If you want this to be half as large, you have to make your uh, and four times as large, things like that. Okay, now we know the mean and standard deviation of our sampling distribution, but the question is what shape is it? Is it normal or is it something else? Well, not surprisingly, I think this kind of makes sense, if you know your population is normal, okay, things like height, for example, then the sampling distribution of x bar is also normal. We did that post-it note activity, it was not a surprise to you that the second, uh, group of post notes was also normal because I told you the first one was. Okay? So if you know your population is normal, then you know your sampling distribution of x bar is normal. So now that we know that, we can actually do an example. Let's look at this example. This is a kind of a complete worked out example. We know women's heights are normally distributed. Notice I'm telling you the population is normal. Here's the mean of the population, 64.5 inches. Here's the standard deviation of the population, it's 2.5 inches. Notice this is just mu and sigma. These are parameters, mean of the population, standard deviation of the population. And you're going to take a sample of 10 women. And we want to find the probability that x bar, this is a statistic, this is a sample mean, is greater than 66 inches. In other words, the probability that you take a sample of 10 women they are, on average, the sample mean of those 10 women is greater than 66 inches. Well, in purple here, we just have two formulas. The mean of all of our x bars is just mu. So mu of x bar, the mean of all possible samples, is 64.5. Sigma of x bar, we have a formula for this now. It's sigma of the population over square root of n. So that's 2.5 over the square root of 10, and we get about 0.79. Now, do we know I can draw a normal curve for my sampling distribution? This is not the population. This curve right here is the sampling distribution. This is the distribution of all possible x bars. This is a sampling distribution. Sampling dis... No, oh, what's going on? Sampling distribution. There we go. Okay. Do we know our sampling distribution is normal? Well, yes, we do, because if, I know, if you know the population is normal, then you know your sampling distribution is normal which is great because now we can just use normal CDF. So normal CDF, we are no bigger than 66. So 66 to big number. This is the mu of, let me actually be very explicit about this. This is the mu of x bar, which we know here is 64.5. This is sigma of x bar, which we know is right here. And you just do that, you're looking for this area here, you get about you know 2.89%. So that problem was a very, very typical problem in section 9.3, but if you think about it, it all relied on the fact that we could use a normal curve because we knew the population was normal. Now we're going to ask the super important question of, well, how do we do these problems if we don't know the population is normal? In other words, 
If we didn't know the heights of women was norm were normally distributed, what would we have known about the sampling distribution? The only reason we could draw that normal curve before was that we knew the population was normal. And I think intuitively we know that not all populations are approximately normal. So what do we do? Well, there's a really surprising result, and it's something called the central limit theorem, which is a term you definitely have to know. It's probably the most important basic idea in the second semester. This slide is super important. We abbreviate the central limit theorem, by the way, as CLT. So if we talk about CLT, we're talking about the central limit theorem. And this is a really surprising result, and the idea is basically that even if you don't know your population is normal, you know your sampling distribution will be approximately normal. And here's actually the words. Take a simple random sample of size n from a population that may or may not be normal. So we don't know the population is normal. As long as n is large, and by large the kind of rule of thumb is about bigger than or 30. Now it could be 29 or 28 or something, or you know, 30 is kind of a rule of thumb. Then the sampling distribution of x bar is normal even though the population wasn't normal. And that's a really, really surprising, important result. We're going to talk about this a lot in class, do some demos and things, but I want to just you to see right now the central limit theorem basically tells us this. So we talked about what shape is the sampling distribution of x bar before, and we've already said, oh, Joe, oh no, what do we do if it's not normal? Well, now here's the important thing. The sampling distribution of x bar is normal as long as n is bigger than 30, and n is your sample size. So now you think about it, there's actually two ways we know the sampling distribution of x bar is normal. It could be that the population is normal. That was that first example we did. Or it could be that n is bigger than 30, and that's the new idea of the central limit theorem. Okay? So let's do an example of that. So here I have an example. In Brazil, it turns out income has a mean, and again, this is mu, this is a parameter of about $5,000. Now, Brazil doesn't use U.S. dollars, but it's roughly equivalent to $5,000, um, with a standard deviation of about $1,400. And I picked income because income is something that we intuitively know is probably not normal. Right? We've seen almost a lot of cases where uh, income is skewed to the right. So you're going to sample 50 people in Brazil, and you want to find the probability that x bar, this is the mean income of those 50 people, x bar is a statistic, is less than $4,800 a year. Well, here, again, income, we don't know that it is uh, normally distributed. In fact, almost certainly it's not. But here's the important idea. Since n is bigger than 30, now what is n in this case? It's 50, because we're asking 50 people. Since n is bigger than 30, the sampling distribution of x bar has to be normal. That's the exciting result of the central limit theorem. So once, as long as n is bigger than 30, we can do virtually the exact same thing we did in the previous example with women's heights. We calculate the mean of x bar. That's just mean of the population. That's 5,000. Calculate sigma of x bar. That's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Sigma over the square root of n. So that's 1,400 divided by the square root of 50 you get about 198. Um, and again, kind of think about it, this, if this number was much bigger, this would go down. Now we can draw this curve, and we're allowed to draw this curve. This is the sampling distribution. This is the sampling distribution of x bar. It's not the population, it's the sampling distribution. And we're looking for this area right here. It's normal because of the central limit theorem. And now we just do normal CDF, small number like 0, 4,800. Right here, this is going to be the mean of the sampling distribution. That's 5,000. This is going to be the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, about 198. And we notice that's actually about almost exactly one standard deviation away. Um, and we get the uh, final answer, which is about 15.6%. Okay? Very, very typical problem in section 9.3. And that wraps up 9.3.